Hi and welcome back to part two of how to build your own home wireless hi-fi speaker system. I'm Jason and in this second part of the tutorial we'll be looking at putting everything we gathered together from part one and creating our sound system. So here we are on the desktop of our computer here and if you remember in part one I finished off with a list of software programs to download. The Pi Music Box software which will download as an image file and when unzipped it should just create a folder with a few files inside. One will be the manual on how to use Music Box or Pi Music Box and the other will be the software program itself that will need to be placed on our SD card but more on that in a moment. The other program is Win32 Disk Imager which I've downloaded and have already installed here. OK, the first thing you're going to need to do is insert your SD card into your SD card reader in your computer. If you don't have one, then you can normally get one from the Pound Shop or PC World or online. It looks something like this. So I have mine inserted into my computer at the moment, so let's check to see if there's anything on it at the moment. So if I go into my computer and I have a look, here we have my H drive. Yours will most likely be a different drive letter. As you can see, I have some files on my SD card. So I'm going to go back to my desktop now, so let's close this, and I'm going to open up my SD formatter tool. And I'm going to use this to erase my SD card. When the program is launched, it generally finds your SD card for you, but make sure you check that you're about to format the right card, just in case you may have another card inserted. It's always good practice to use the drop-down box here and make sure that there are no other drive letters in there that you could possibly overwrite by accident. So when you're happy you have the right drive, just click the Format button. It's asking me if I want to do a quick format, so I'm just going to say OK. and then we can OK for dry format complete. OK, good. Now let's open our Win32 Disk Imager program. So the first thing it's asking us for is the image file. So let's click on the little folder button over here and we're going to browse to where our image file is. And if you remember, it was on our desktop under our music box folder and there is our music box image file. So I'm going to click open. We can see on the right here that it's already selected our drive letter. So now I can simply click the right button. It then gives us a warning of what we're about to do so let's just click yes. And we will then see the progress of our software image being transferred onto the SD card. It should take around 60 seconds depending on your computer data speed, etc. Eventually you'll see a message saying write successful, so you can just click OK. And we can exit this. There are some configurations you can make to some of the files on the SD card before you insert it into the Raspberry Pi if you wish. I would recommend opening up the music box manual and have a read through for more information. So we can now place our SD card into our Raspberry Pi device. And while we're at it, let's also plug in the network cable, power adapter and the creative transmitter. So you should have something like this diagram. I'm not going to plug the power adapter into the mains at the moment, but I am going to plug the other end of the network cable into a spare port on the back of my home broadband router. We'll come back to this in a moment. Let's now look at speaker setups around the house using the creative receivers and speakers that we have. This one, for example, is plugged into a speaker dock in the bedroom. And as you can see, it's just using the jack plug port. The creative receiver also comes with its own power supply which I've plugged in and switched on. All I need to do now is place a few more of these in different rooms around the house and I'll be ready to power up my Raspberry Pi with my Pi Music Box software. So let's imagine that I've connected up a few more receivers 
to some more speakers in different rooms around the house. I'm going to go back to my Raspberry Pi now and plug the power supply into the mains. You'll need to give it a few minutes to boot up and then you'll be ready to access the Wi-Fi streaming system from any mobile phone or tablet. If you wish to access the system via an Apple iPod, iPad or iPhone, simply open Safari and type http colon forward slash forward slash music box full stop local forward slash. If you have any difficulty accessing the device, you should try connecting to it via its IP address. And the best way to find the IP address would be to connect to your broadband router. Although it may not be the same as my setup, I'm going to show you how I would do this on my computer. So if you're on Windows 7, you would click the start button and then you'd get the run command come up. Uh, in my case, it's here. So I'm going to type CMD and let's do IP config and press enter. And what we see here is 192.168.1.4 which is the IP address of my computer but more importantly we've got the default gateway here and that's 192.168.1.1 this is my home broadband router so with this address and if I take a note of it I can open up a browser window and I'm just going to type this in the address bar at the top 192.168.1.1 and press enter and I can log on to my broadband router let's go into advanced and as I say yours yours may be slightly different than this but generally it's always the same we're looking for LAN devices local area network devices things that are connected to our home network if I press my Ethernet tab up here for example by default your Pi Music Box will name itself as Music Box. So here we can see my Music Box is here, so it's all ready to go. And there is the IP address of my Music Box, so it's 192.168.1.11. So let's go ahead and type in 192.168.1.11. And what we're met with is a very, very simple graphical user interface to do with our little Raspberry Pi with Pi Music Box installed. So for example if I wanted to go down to streams I could decide to use one of these radio stations and as soon as I choose one it will start to play and we know it's playing because we have the play button down the bottom there and if I wanted I could just pause it. Let me just go back home for a second and let's say uh, I want to play something from my playlist now I have a Spotify account and you can set up your Spotify account on your Raspberry Pi device through your computer or your iPad or your Android pad and you'll get the same menu system as you see here and I could just select one of my favorite playlists and start playing from there so let's pause that one and one more thing I was going to show you is the browse. So what I could actually browse for also is local media that may be on my computer system. So for example, um, if I get it to look for artists maybe. And these are all of the uh, artists I have saved on one of my computers on my home network. So all of these things can be set up. If you read through the manual, you'll find it's quite easy enough self-explanatory if you have any questions please drop me a line and I'll be happy to answer any questions you might have I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and you now could be the proud owner of a home Wi-Fi streaming system that instead of costing you 900 pound would hopefully have only cost you a hundred pound or less thanks for watching